get ready for your first round of funding. Uh, get ready for your first round of funding. Now, this is something that is going to be key to any person who is actually looking for funding here. If you're a startup, if you're a founder, this is the sort of panel you want to be on. And with me, I have two very experienced people from the fundraising space and who have actually raised funds themselves. First off, we have Thomas Devinishek from Kiro Sports. Thomas, if you'd like to join us on stage, as well as Yuri Romana Yuka uh, from iClub Global, who are going to give us their insights on what it takes for your first round of funding. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Welcome to Sigma and AIBC. Oh, Vinny's joining us as well. Okay. Fan. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't see you down there, Vinny. <laughs> I was like, oh, and obviously Vinicius from Ikigai Ventures. Good morning, everyone. So just shortly, let's introduce ourselves, uh, give a bit, of a bit of a background on where your experience in the funding uh, round has come from. Tomasz. Hi, everyone. Tomasz Devanishek. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Kiro Gaming. We're a uh, B2B supplier of micro betting technology. Uh, in the U.S., out here in Europe, Latam, Asia. Um, my background in terms of fundraising is obviously primarily through my journey as a as an entrepreneur. We've done uh, three rounds in about 18 months, up rounds, including one in May of this year, and uh, so I've done quite well. And happy to share my background with that. Invested in you. And Ikigai are one of those investors. I Ikigai led every round. No, <laughs> Fantastic. Yuri. <clears throat> yeah, hi. Thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Yuri Romanyuka. Uh, I have a VC background uh, in my DNA because I studied in California and Berkeley University. And uh, again, like, you know, with venture capital, I already have experience in over than, uh, 10 years. And uh, with iClub, we are investing actively in early stage. Um, roughly, we are doing uh, 1, 1.5 million investments per month in early stage companies that we are selecting for the venture capital syndication. And so, of course, uh, we have already robust structure results. We have eight exits. Uh, one exit is also upcoming this year. And all of the 80 companies investing with iClub only. So that's it. Fantastic. And Vinicius? Okay. Hello? Hey. Yeah? Yep. Um, I think uh, whoever was here before, my background is Finance, uh, I was a founder, but never raised money as a founder, didn't need to. Um, as in terms of investment, early stage investment, that's uh, I think why we're here. I uh, was a scout for Atomico. Um, I had uh, worked in a few VC funds, always in, in seed or precede stage. And right now I'm an investment partner of Ikigai and we do basically precede and seed. Investment. All right. So today we're going to be going around the first round of funding. Now, first round of funding is an easy way to make a lot of mistakes if you've never done that before. What are some of the sort of mistakes and pitfalls that you would tell a first-time founder to try to avoid, which are very common that you've seen or that you've made yourself? Thomas, I'll, we'll start with you there. Yeah, I think for me, the only time I've raised money was for this company. And, and I, lucky for me, self-funded for the first year and a half. So I didn't, like, I, I wanted to get to... Uh, some traction before I went out and raised capital versus it just being an idea. But I think my biggest um, takeaway from my first round was I was very excited about the technology and the product. Mm -hmm. And that's not what people invest in. People invest in companies. And the my journey allowed me to quickly sort of reorganize myself and realize that the story that I have to tell is not of the technology or the um, the space, but rather of how this will be a big company. Mm -hmm. And and the analogy that I use is, you know, investors are pretty much better, right? Like we're all in the mm -hmm. betting space, so yep. I think it's an easy analogy to understand. An, an investor is basically just doubling down on a pair of cards that they got dealt in blackjack. And mm -hmm. so what you want is you want that pair to be an eleven versus a four or you know, or, or, or five or something like that. So, uh, or sorry, 14 or 15. Um, and, and that's the key is that you have to tell a story of the company versus the technology. That was my biggest mistake. Uh, Yuri, what have you seen as like key mistakes that, uh, funds have come to you or founders have come to you with? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, again, like, uh, it started out with a mindset. So if you're trying to raise your first money, uh, please not to start to approach uh, venture capital funds. 
it's uh, number one mistake. Uh, I uh, definitely suggest you to start to just have a discussion with the sophisticated founders with industry track results. Uh, we have plenty of them on this stage uh, and this uh, conference. It's exactly the right moment to have uh, people to join your company as angel investors. And uh, if they are, will be on board, it will facilitate your idea, your vision for any kind of institutional venture capital fund. Because it's not just about their money. They can put like 20, 50K just a check to your company. It doesn't like reflect and change the whole things dramatically, but it will change your approach while you're pitching these VCs. And the uh, most like common thing that I would like also to share, it's focusing on your product specifically because uh, your vision is, is important but more importantly how fast you deliver some milestones because any relation that you start today on this conference with any vcs on these panels and everywhere <clears throat> they want to see how you progress so you need to have in mind that you need to change dramatically how you're approaching your product your milestone KPIs so that you can see that you're doing something reactual, really actual, not just uh, talking about your vision, about something that you're planning to do. And the last thing that uh, I would like to mention that this year, um, the, of course, valuation started out to be a little bit lower, but uh, I'm suggesting to everyone use the standard safe terms for your first round. It's most common right now. It's 80% of the early stage funding round right now is closing with a safe uh, structure of the deal. So please not spend a lot of money and resource on lawyers. Just have very sophisticated format of investing. Yeah, and just to clarify, if anybody is a founder and doesn't know what a safe is, uh, that is a, a sale against future equity, whereby you're not actually putting a valuation at that point, but you're giving some form of bonus when you actually do issue the stock at that point. Correct? Correct, correct. Okay. Venetius. Can, can I argue yeah. the founder's side of this? Yeah, sure. Because you're not. Like, safe is still going to have a cap, so you actually are yeah. putting a, a, a valuation on it. Okay. Most safes will come with a cap, so the cap will say, oh, it's going to be $10 million and no mm -hmm. more. So if you raise at 50 that investor still gets it at 10 most safes, not all, uh -huh. but most not, safes. But, but uh, a cap isn't required at that stage. It's not required, okay. but, but a, most, lot of a lot of people like do put Like every it in safe yeah, that you already mentioned is probably doing a, a cap. Uh, Venetius, so uh, we mentioned the word valuation. How important, how, how, how does a first time founder value his company? Where, where does that come from? Usually they come from the sky, but uh, <laughs> they should have more of a ground setting. Uh -huh. uh, normally, there are numerous uh, sources out there that, to, especially in the U.S., that and that's how I, I kind of operate. Um, law firms that do like I don't know 30, 40 deals uh, every month, and they have a tracking of how the valuation are in each stage, in each uh, industry. Now you take that and you adjust your reality. Like if you are in, in Europe, you're gonna discount that for I don't know X. If you're in mm -hmm. Latin, you should discount that for I don't know X. What you don't want is come up as um, delusional. Like I have a pitch deck and my valuation is 20 million. Mm -hmm. um, so when you, if you did get a valuation from one of these companies or a reputable company that has a valuation and you think it's too high, would, should you go lower? Sorry, I didn't follow. So if you actually went to one of these companies and they gave you a valuation that, is too, that you feel is too high, I've seen this, for example, I, I saw a valuation in a company I'm involved with, which set it up at like 80 million or something like that. And we were like, whoa, this is, I mean, we're really early stage to be getting that valuation. Would you bring it down? Oh, yeah, because uh, uh, valuation, let's be honest, it's not math. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of opinion in the end of the day. Yeah. If okay. you're talking about like, maybe late, late stage companies, yes, you can trust the math. But uh, early stage companies, first time, to, uh, round of founding, it's a negotiation. It's a perception of a uh, good. Now, if you're stuck with your high value because you think you're, I don't know, you think that that's supposed to be a valuation, then probably you're going to be shutting a lot of doors. You have to be kind of flexible and you have to listen to the market. If you're saying like, hey, my valuation is 20 million and uh, every investor that you go through is saying it's between 10 to 12, it's because it's between 10 to 12. So listen to the money yeah. is what you, essentially what you're saying. Now, I, I'm, I'm working on uh, with a, a multi-time founder at the moment, and one thing he's been drilling into my head about when you're when you're starting your sort of fundraise is you need four uh, additional po four points: story, people, numbers, which we always know about. Like you have to have those. But one which he's driven into me was the exit. 
How important is knowing how you're going to exit your company at the beginning of your journey? Is it, do you think that's an important point in the fundraise? No, no one's really asked me that before, and I, I, I've not focused on it personally because I think if you build a great company, the exit part sort of takes care of itself. You know, mm -hmm. so for me, tying it back to the valuation part, I think too many founders get stuck on, oh, like I think this is it, and you guys are right. Like your opinion doesn't matter, but but my met methodology to the valuation was always, what do I want to achieve with this capital? I.e., like what do I need to hit? How long is that going to take? And then how much of the company do I want to give up for that? Right. Mm -hmm. So so you almost work it backwards. Like, okay, I think I need two million, and I'm okay with giving up. 15%, okay, the valuation is mm -hmm. X, right? So you sort of reverse engineer and focus on the business. I think that, that the exit part takes care of itself if you build a great company. As a VC, does knowing an exit make any difference to you? Yeah, I can add something. Like, uh, Of course, we have <clears throat> amazing founders that we co-invest uh, in the company that they are projecting the exits. I have a personal experience with a guy who I met like you know 10 years ago, and he mentioned me that he will sold his company in three years to Akamai, and then I went uh, selling this company in three years to Oracle. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, exactly how he stand point on this uh, direction. It was like, maybe it's not just a magician, it's exactly understanding how the industry operating. And if we're talking about investors, I'd rather like, you know, focusing on the vision for the next funding round stages. Because uh, most of exits that we are have with uh, iClub, it's uh, secondaries. Because mm -hmm. uh, if the institutional players would join the funding round on the growth stage, the likelihood to uh, like, uh, consolidate the cap table, and that's an option for the exit. We get our uh, multiplies, um, and that's a great uh, result for us as investors. For the founders itself, like, you know, I, I definitely want to, uh, again, like, you know, to specify that they need to have a, a real touch and uh, conversation and a relation with the industry players to understand how exactly it evolved. Because your angel investors who will put your small tickets as, like, for example, CEO of one of the biggest players in the industry can potentially acquire your company mm -hmm. on a specific stage because they know exactly where this industry is going through and he trusts in you. He is already on board. He sees your report. So, like, you know, it's an easy deal. But for the founders itself, like, you know, my suggestion is to focus in mostly not to sell in the company, but to perform in the company to the stage that it will, be, will become the very big story. Okay. So it's, in my opinion, on early stage, very important to know, because like if you, I suggest everyone that you will sell the company with uh, no matter what, the valuation, etc. maybe it will be a red flag for the investor. Yeah, I agree. The red flag part to, to me, like if you're a really early stage company, it shouldn't even be envisioning an exit at this point. Like, of course, you need to know the market. Uh, I don't think uh, an investor in the very early stage, someone that is, uh, let's say, more professional, uh, will ask about the exit. If this question comes up, all you need is more like, okay, this company that is in the similar just got sold for this amount of money, this other got sold. But don't bring that to the pitch deck, like, okay, uh, oh. I'm already thinking <laughs> about the X. I don't even have a product, but I'm already thinking about the X. It is like... Yeah, and, uh, and also importantly, that uh, right now we see this AI trend. So every industry will change dramatically. There will be more industry transformation that we'll see. Maybe sub industry will try to just appear that we not even consider that they are, will be present. So these kind of stories will also change, not just historically, Mm -hmm. How these exits and multiplies and valuations will come up because uh, no one uh, knows exactly how this industry will succeed or not, like you know, in different kind of cases. All right. Now another question is: You're a first-time found founder. You said go speak to angels. How important is building network at that early stage when you're even just in the idea creation? You haven't even started the fundraising. How important is network building in the fundraising uh, at that first round? Tomash. I think Yuri said something super smart. Like, first of all, founders love other founders. So if you're working on a project, like I, I have this experience where, you know, we're three rounds in, et cetera. But there are some times where, when I meet a founder and he shows me a concept on his phone, and I already know which of my investors mm -hmm. would like to take a look. I'm not guaranteeing him money, but I know, like, hey, I see that you're doing the work. You've got a really cool prototype. I know three guys that would like to take a look. So I think the network is is massive. It's it's the only thing you can do because again, sort of not to keep praising Yuri, but 
as he said. <laughs> Are you looking for money from Yuri? <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, no, no, we're no, not no. raising. We're not. We, raising. We're not raising. We already like uh, made this train for now, but we definitely want to consider the next stage. Okay. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. But, oh, <laughs> um, uh, about connect connecting uh, the invest. Uh, yeah, oh, oh so yeah. So investors. what he said was, in this industry, there are a lot of successful people who actually do angel investing, and they're the best folks to get those early checks because they can actually qualify your idea really well. And not all of them will like it, right? Like some people will say, oh, this is not for me, or I think this company is already doing that, so they're going to win or whatever. But it's so key to get to know the industry because that's where you're going to get the most qualified and fastest checks. When I was doing my first round, uh, I did three meetings with Andreessen, mm -hmm. right? Which is, you know, it's yeah. one of the biggest names and, the, and it, like it was great. But it didn't go anywhere because they're not from the industry. So to them, it's almost like an exploration project, whereas people from the industry will quickly qualify it and tell you yes or no, which is all you want, mm -hmm. right? Like, just have more conversations. Yuri, network? Yes, of course. And uh, about the valuations, please, uh, uh, I just want to add uh, to this uh, last question that uh, valuation is uh, on average right now for the PC stage is around 10 million. Of course, you know, 2021 was crazy that you just have an idea with Web 3.0, you already have 40 million valuation on, the, on just the beginning. Uh, but right now it's not the same. But my uh, key staying point, if you want to think about valuation, thinking about the lead who will like close your funding round. Like yeah. If you are thinking about like uh, fundraising as a strategic approach, of course you start with the angels, but then once you have these angels on board, you can approach right VCs. And it's also like, you know, you have all the data already. You track the LinkedIn, for example, of these founders who are there already have uh, on board as a co-investors, for example, for their Series A stage, pre-seed stage, and approach them because they're already familiar with these founders. So that's like one by one standpoint. You got them on board. You have already like pre-committed these uh, founders that already want to put some money. So you have allocation. You have lead investor. You have completely clear standpoint. And again, like uh, it's not uh, something that end up rapidly. So thinking about it wisely, because we have an experience, for example, with a quick commerce company that at the beginning of the war in Ukraine, decided to just shut up the company and distribute money back to investors. So that's for me, it's a standpoint that everyone at the founder should understand. Like, you know, sometimes you should also understand that industry right now is not ready for this disruption. So maybe it's better to save your relations with investors first, rather than the trying to apply something with not clear condition of the market mm -hmm. so it's, it's also a wise move because like and anyhow you end up with a new idea with a new company but you will approach the same investors and they likely could go with you that's it and it's probably evergreen advice it's not just the current conditions like you should do that always because some ideas just don't work out and you can either keep burning your money or you could say you know what i think i see the data points mm -hmm. that this will not work or this will be harder than, than i thought let me actually give half of the money back or something yeah yeah uh, for sure, it, it's about the low volatility relation building strategy that you will have on your left path as a founder. It's not just one story, one hit. I want to add uh, two points about uh, networking. First of all, um, uh, looking from an investor perspective, okay, um, there are some founders that I talk to and they come back to me six or seven months later. Hey, do you remember me? No, of course I don't. <laughs> okay, uh, so I, I think like that it's very important that the networking part, but it's also very important that even founders, uh, even investors that not invest in you uh, up to this point, send a, create kind of a newsletter once a month showing the traction. Eventually I will realize, hey, every month uh, this guy is sending me, oh, last month he was doing this, this month he grew, next month he grew, I will remember you <coughs> way more. The second part is, um, Regarding angel investment, that's kind of a debate. But I think uh, in nowadays we have instruments that allow us that. Okay, like uh, iClub, like iClub, yes, like <laughs> iClub, exactly. Because uh, there was like this myth that uh, I need a, a minimum ticket size, and I still run into this because I do a lot of angel investment. Um, oh, my minimum ticket size is twenty-five thousand or fifty fifty thousand or so. Mate, if you would come to me and say, uh, my minimum ticket size is 1,000 or 2,000, I would probably put money in your company and then I would help because it's my money in the, yeah. on the line. So if you, 
if you're like in a very early stage and you figure out, hey, this is my industry, this is, these are uh, the, the key consumers for my industry, these are the guys that I want to approach, offer them, open them, like go, hey, can you write me a check of 1,000? I'll guarantee that this guy will support you if you need to sell the, the, uh, uh, this idea mm -hmm. to any, any client. And you can package that through iClub, SPVs, yeah. and so on. Please. There's no need to, I'm a pre-seed uh, pre founder, my minimum t t ticket is 50,000, sorry. Yeah, with iCloud, for example, we have Buy a, a minimal ticket 5,000 even, like 5,000, but we have over than 1,000 iCloud members that can legally invest inside the company. So angel investment as a like investment uh, um, a cluster, it's very small compared to, for example, public market investors. It's like 0.5% ratio to five people that invest in, in stocks and bond and global, like, you know, institutional investment uh, strategies. So my uh, advice to everyone, like consider angel investment, not just like uh, an option to you as a fundraiser uh, or first time founder, but also as a your personality to have a side hustle um, to invest by your own. Because like, you know, we, you have robust traction results that the industry and understanding of the industry that you can apply for these startups and maybe learn something by investing your own money. Because if you're not putting your skin in the game, it's your own money, not just time, you never understand how it really operates. And if you have experience with a great founder that, for example, can grow the company to 100 million in three years, like we have, that's exactly like, you know, something that you need to learn exactly with the pitch deck, how they approach investors, everything. It's all about us. We have everything online on platform, please register, iClub.vc. And uh, I think also Tomas mentioned something that I had mentioned before when I was talking uh, with Olga, is that entrepreneurs, the ecosystem of entrepreneurs, that's your best lead because mm -hmm. you eventually feel compelled to help. Oh, this guy is starting something. He has the drive. Oh, I'm gonna help. Um, and every I I don't know any uh, entrepreneur that had an exit that eventually did not start to write angel checks like crazy. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, I, I made an exit. Now let's burn this money. Fair enough. Okay, before because we only have three minutes left. Um, cap table. How easy is it to make a mistake in your first round in the cap table? How how high should you go? How how much should you give away that first round? Yuri. Yeah, so I just checked the statistics on, on average, uh, like uh, the number for the pre-seed uh, seed stage company is around 20% of the company. But as I mentioned to you, please consider this safe option, not stick with evaluation. And again, like, you know, if you want to build your story uh, upcoming, like further come, uh, not try to like uh, approach uh, institutional players first. Like, you know, try to, save your shares for the next funding round, especially with the marketing condition that we have right now, because you never know. We do have some founders that, for example, save uh, the structure uh, to the Series C with around 60% uh, of ownership of the company as the founders, but it's most of the, of the time is exclusion. So yeah. pay uh, to your investor wisely and get on board only the real people that can change the whole play for you. Tomasz? Yeah, the, the first round, I'm not sure how important it is because it's unless you're giving away 60% or something, I don't think you can mess it up that much. I think it's the later stages where you really should get selective because you kind of weed out, like on your first round, and I'm just speaking purely from my perspective then, mm -hmm. you're so desperate for money. And if people are writing you 20 or 50K checks, like that's not going to be 30% of the company, right? Mm -hmm. so, you, so you get a bunch of little guys on there. And then as Yuri was saying, in later rounds, you can actually get them out through secondary because a lot of them are just doing it kind of, again, mm. 20K, oh, now I made 30 in a year, let me take that out. So I think you can fix those mistakes. It's really down the line where it becomes, because again, we did three rounds and we got increasingly more selective with each round because we could tell now, okay, well, this guy, not going to help at all. He said he was going to help, but he's useless. But these guys are actually have been super helpful and they had a small allocation initially but now they want a lot <laughs> Enki guy is one of those guys <laughs> Venetia's cap table it. is it important that first round uh, I agree totally with uh, Tomas I think what you should be looking of course you're not going to sell 60% of your company for <coughs> 10,000 
But what you should be looking is the rights and the work that you are giving away. As in, oh, I'm signing something that the guy is asking for, I don't know, information every single week. The guy wants to interfere the business because it's in the contract and so on. I think those small details are more troublesome than uh, you try to figure out the percentage. All right. And one last thing before we go. Um, what is the one, like in one sentence, one piece of advice you would give to a founder watching this now if they are doing a fundraising stage? One quick piece of advice. Be honest with yourself about where you are and what your company is worth, I think, at this point. Uh, today, I just also want to mention that uh, this year is amazing for early stage founders. For the growth stage companies, it's not so great here. Again, like, you know, because the valuations drop. But uh, if we come in with the numbers, the number of early stage VC funds right now is growing. The biggest institutional players like Tiger Global, they also started out to refocus them on early stage. So early stage is important right now. So any founder that decides to loan the company in 2023, it's exactly the best time to do that because you have all the source with the founders and investors that already have traction results. You have AI trend that can change everything dramatically. And again, like, you know, you have a better time to grow your company to the growth stage because right now it's the time to start something because the biggest player that you have in the room today, they will change dramatically. The status quo is not uh, something that they can rely on right now. They're not so flexible. They're not so key, like it's the point to find something new business model like you are. And again, AI adaptation for them, it's very complex to do that if they are a big one and earning a lot of money. So that's the time. And uh, definitely want to have a chat with all the founders that want to also approach me today because uh, I think like you know we also close the next fund for investing early stage. So that's uh, definitely the right moment to start it. Fantastic, Vinny. One last word. Um, I'd say be grounded. As same as Tomas said, be grounded. Uh, know what uh, what your company is worth and so, and also kind of be creative. There are so many uh, ways of financing your company. Uh, that doesn't even go through funding. But if you had to go through funding, I think we all offer some uh, perspective. Tomás was saying about networking with other founders that can introduce you to VC. He was uh, talking about iClub, about those kind of uh, of initiatives that pull together uh, money from uh, small investors. I mentioned about taking small uh, checks from uh, key people that you want to approach. So I think be creative and be grounded. That's the main uh, advice that I give. So I take away from and the, don't stop, right? Like that's I think advice that's useful to sometimes people need to hear that in tough times. Just don't fucking stop, keep uh -huh. going. If if there's true potential there. 